Let us pray. Holy God, it is in you in whom we live and move and have our being, and for that we give you thanks. Help us to open our whole lives to your presence within us and among us, so that we may be part of your creation in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, how superstitious are you? Do you avoid, at all costs, walking under ladders, breaking mirrors, and opening umbrellas inside? Do you believe that a black cat crossing your path will bring you seven years of bad luck? Do you knock on wood so as not to jinx your good fortune? Do you rub your lucky rabbit's foot when faced with a challenging situation? Do you forward those chain emails to ten of your closest friends so that good luck will flow your way? When I traveled to Ireland several years ago, I kissed that disgusting Blarney stone at the top of the castle, hanging upside down, I might add, because legend told me that it would give me the much sought after gift of gab. (laughs) And I remember when I was little, saying a little rhyme as I walked down the sidewalk, trying to dodge the cracks in the pavement. Step on a crack and you'll break your mother's back. Now, while the odds of it actually happening were pretty slim in my eight-year-old mind, part of me wondered if, when I actually failed to miss a crack in the sidewalk, my mother was at work, suddenly wrenching in pain from a cracked spine. In any case, suffice it to say that we believe in some, shall we say, unusual things. But why do we do these things? Why do we believe in things like these? It's as if there's some force out there controlling our lives just to make sure it doesn't start acting against us or to ensure that the force is always with us. We believe and we behave in these ways. We want to cover our bases just in case. And really, who doesn't? Well, this is the sort of culture that Paul walks into when he visits Athens, the scene described in our first reading today from Acts. The Greeks, as you know, had their gods, and they had all sorts of gods. Gods of war and music, goddesses of hunting and love, gods and goddesses to cover every aspect of human life and even human death. Instead of rubbing a lucky rabbit's foot or knocking on wood, the ancient Greeks prayed to one of their many gods. So when Paul walks the streets of Athens, he sees signs of these gods and goddesses, objects of devotion, altars dedicated to their honor. But one thing in particular catches his attention. On one altar is a sign that reads, To an unknown God. Just so they're covering all their bases, the Greeks include an altar to an unknown God just in case they forgot one. If there's a God somewhere out there that oversees things they haven't thought of yet, airplane travel, information technology, or the lottery, perhaps, they want to make sure they give this God the proper respect. The French philosopher Blaise Pascal said that if you're not sure whether God exists, it's better to believe than not to believe, just in case. If we believe in God and God doesn't exist, he said, we're probably better off than if God does exist and we don't believe. It's a fancy way of saying that Pascal was covering his bases in much the same way the Greeks were doing with their altar dedicated to an unknown God in much the same we do with our superstitious beliefs. But for Paul, the altar dedicated to an unknown God had a greater significance. God, you see, was not unknown to Paul. Paul had come to know God as revealed in Jesus. So he turns to those Athenians and tells them that he will teach them about the God they don't know, about the God that he has come to know, about the God that all of us can and do come to know very closely. Instead of placing your trust in some unknown cosmic force, some unknown God, Paul suggests, why don't you place your trust in the God who made heaven and earth, and in God's Son, Jesus, who was raised from the dead, and in the Holy Spirit, that great comforter in our lives. This, as Paul says, is the God in whom we live and move 
and have our being. Try God, Paul suggests. For what sort of God, what sort of force can be greater than this? And so here in this lovely passage from the book of Acts, we hear again this suggestion for our own lives. We hear again the invitation to give up on our lucky charms and to place our trust and our whole beings in the hands of God, whom we have come to know through Jesus. As we approach Pentecost Sunday, just two Sundays away now, our gospel readings begin to reflect the notion of the Holy Spirit. The idea is that as Jesus prepares to leave the earth and to ascend into heaven, He also promises to leave his disciples and us with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the continuing presence of God in our lives. In today's gospel text from John, Jesus promises that not only will the Holy Spirit be with them, the Holy Spirit will be in them, working in them, making God's love known to others in and through them. In our first reading, Paul tells the Athenians that God is not an unknown God, but a God that they know very closely. And our gospel text suggests that we know God by knowing ourselves and by knowing each other. I know God because I know you, each and every one of you. And because of that and because of God's presence in you, I am able to throw my rabbit's foot aside. I can open my umbrella inside without fear, walk confidently under a ladder. I can do these things because you represent a force greater than luck and fortune. You represent love. God has already given us the greatest assurance we could ever hope for through the resurrection, and we are witnesses of this assurance to each other. God, the Father of Jesus Christ, has already covered all of our bases for us. God has given and gives us more than our lucky charms ever could more than an altar to an unknown God could ever promise. One person I talked to recently reminded me of that practice of burying St. Joseph upside down, facing the street in your front yard while you're trying to sell your house. I have no idea what the statistics are, but I know that people do this and swear by it. My dad, a realtor, was aware of this practice. I even found a St. Joseph's statue home selling kit online if you'd like to try it yourself. Now, if you have done this, or if you do consider yourself superstitious, it's okay. But know that God's love is greater than all of this. And believe in this love. And know that when you experience love, you are coming into contact with God. When you know love, you know God. So look around you today and see God's presence in yourself and in each other. Feel the extreme force of God's love in this place and in all of our lives. The best thing in the world didn't happen because someone knocked on wood or rubbed a rabbit's foot. The best thing in the world happened because we have a God who knows us and loves us. We have a God in whom we live and move and have our being. So I'm telling you, try God in your lives. It works. Amen.